Hello and welcome to West Country Wanderings. Welcome to Somerset, West Somerset in fact. I'm actually down here for the day because I'm doing a Christmas video later. And while I'm in the air I thought I'd stop off at this point. We're at a tiny little village called Lilstock. This place is really hard to get to. If you've been watching my videos recently you might remember the one I did from the Lizard when we're looking for railway lines in that area. And I said on that video that it was the most remote video I'd ever done. Well today I think we found the coldest location which is two degrees, certainly the coldest temperature that I've ever made a video on. And it also today is not quite as remote as Lid, but not far off. We're about 12 miles from the town of Bridgewater in Somerset and that over there you might be able to make out in the midst of the murk is Hinkley Point. Now one of the reasons that the coastline here in the Bristol Channel is so interesting is because of its geology and we come across a bit of that when we was on the Lizard too. So we're going to have a closer look at this cliff here at Lilstock because one of the things that Lilstock is famous for is fossils and we're going to have a look to see if we can find any here today. Now sadly I haven't had enough time to read up on the detailed geology of this location. Suffice to say though that this cliff here is made up of a lot of slate. There's also shale but down there right on the foreshore is something entirely different. So down here you can see that the rock is starting to change away from that cliff face there where we had the shale and the slate. And you have the sand here, my gloves you can see that there, it's very very fine like a millstone grit. So it has changed consistency since we walked away from that cliff face just a few metres ago. But just here, just right on the foresaw is where it really really gets interesting. Yes, it's that out there. It's actually a form of a limestone pavement. Now, of course, we've come across the limestone rock many times, particularly in the Cotswold, where it's an olytic limestone and it has that honey coloured or yellowy, sometimes grey appearance. Here, it looks entirely different. And this is where I need to do some more research and put it in the information below. It's certainly, as I say, a form of limestone pavement. Now, many, many years ago, when I was doing my geography A level, we stayed for two weeks at a place called Malham in Yorkshire. And there's a fabulous example of a limestone pavement there. And this has similarities to that. As I say, though, the colour of the rock is quite different. We'll have a closer look. Now the texture of this is quite interesting because it actually looks from this viewpoint there if you take away the sea and if you imagine that there was buildings or cottages either side that this could be a cobbled street perhaps in Manchester maybe it's a precursor of Coronation Street but no although it has a consistency of a cobbled street of course it isn't it wasn't man-made it's entirely due to its geology.
Now it's worth noting that very similar to where we were at Porth Hoostock, this place at Lillstock also isn't on the southwest coast path because of course the southwest coast path ends at Minehead just a few miles further along the coast in a west southwesterly direction from here. But it does lie on the England coast path which is a coast path that encircles the entirety of the country of England. Well almost, there's some places where it's not complete yet but this is one of the first places the designation started. A bit further on the beach the limestone pavement takes on a slightly different complexion because it's become tilted it's also become wave cut and there's a clue because that over there are wave cut platforms a very distinctive geological feature. Now if you decide to visit Lillstock for yourself please remember to bring very strong and stout footwear which particularly protects your ankles because these stones or in fact boulders are really really difficult to walk on so take your time they can be slippery as well so make sure you're very very careful don't try walking on them with sandals or ordinary beach footwear because you will come unstuck. Now one of the other mysteries of Lillstock Beach is this here. It's some wooden stakes poking through the rock boulders and it looks like it's remains of a pier. I'm not sure the history of that when I go back and edit this video. If I can find you any information about a pier at Lillstock then I'll put it in below but it seems quite likely it was probably a small fishing pier because obviously just two miles further along the coast in northerly direction in the direction of Bristol you have Hinkley Point and of course next to that you've got the famous Hinkley Point nuclear power station which is a, a major construction par project here in the West Country. Now it's a very useful informative sign so I don't have to wait till I get home to check the internet there's no signal here so I couldn't check out my phone but in the 1820s Sir John Ackland and I think this land is still owned by the Ackland estate you have to drive along a private road to get here more about that in a bit he built a harbour here in the 1820s and its main purpose was to bring in coal from South Wales just a few miles the other side of the Bristol Channel from here but it was also used to export wood and that wood was used for pit props in the coal mines of South Wales. Another fascinating thing here at Lillstock is this Royal Navy aircraft range. I think it's a range finder system, like ILS, and I think it's only used occasionally. It doesn't seem to be manned at the moment when they're using flying missions up and down the Bristol Channel.
So just to mention about the practicalities of coming here, as I said, it's a private road. There is a car park which is free, but the car park's quite small. Now as an alternative, you can go to a place called Kill, which has its own beach, it's Kill Village, just off the A39 road heading towards Minehead. In fact, my YouTube colleague Louise from South West Sundays did a video about Kill Beach a few months ago and I'll put a link into that video in the description. As I say, you can park at Kill and then walk back along the England coast path to here as a little stock as an alternative to driving down the very narrow lanes and the very small car park here. So from a very cold and well foggy-ish, not so foggy as it was when I first got here, foggy day here in West Somerset right on the coast of the Bristol Channel. That's it for today on West Country Wanderings. I hope you enjoyed it. If you hit subscribe and the bell you'll then find out what video I'm going to make later on today. It's also here in West Somerset but it's a very very completely different to this one here on the coast. Until next time take care of yourselves, look after yourselves and I hope to see you on the channel again very, very soon. All the best for now. Cheers. Goodbye.